What's up guys? I am Dylan and today we are going to be building an AAP-01, a very special one. This one is going to be mine and that I plan to and hopefully will use for the 2023 NSL season. So this build is brought to you by Take One Airsoft. Take One Airsoft is the number one spot for AAP parts in the US with the largest selection and always the first to have new innovative products. Our team has been partnered with Take One for a while now and we look forward to the future with them. Make sure to use code NEBULA to get yourself a discount on anything from TakeOneAirsoft.com. He's such a good dude and he ships lightning fast, so make sure you hit up Take One. Now, this is my donor AAP. Um, it's, I say donor because it's not functional. It doesn't work. So, uh, we're going to be using the parts from this though because we got a new one. We're going to be building, to my knowledge, and I checked last night, the first FUKU kit on YouTube. And for the rest of this video, I'm going to call it the uh, FU2 kit just for the ease of <laughs> saying so many syllables. But I'm gonna run down through real quick all of the parts that we're going to be putting into this. So this is kind of an older beat up uh, CTM grip. So I'm gonna put a new CTM grip in. Something else that I'm super, super excited about is the Keystone Kappa Customs AAP plates. These are stippled for the CTM grip. I'm super excited about that. Uh, I really, really like this pattern. They're working on getting them on the website. They don't have these on their website just yet, but um, this was my favorite pattern there, so they sent me this. Then we got the CTM trigger, the Cow Cow Bolt, Cow Cow Magwell, Waldo's Customs Little Snap Nozzle Spring, a Cow Cow Nozzle Block, Cow Cow Nozzle, and the RMR mount sights for the AAP-01 and in this donor I have a CTM spring, I have my guide rod, my selective switch obviously, all my hop up barrel, uh, I have maple leaf barrel and bucking with the stock hop up. I'm one of the weird ones that like the stock hop up. I haven't had any issues with it so I haven't felt the need to upgrade yet and I also have the um, Haldron, Hadron, something like that, uh, bounce kit. The reason I'm using the Haldron um, bounce kit is because it's a soft rubber, so you can get faster recoil, or sorry, faster reset with less buffers, and it's softer, so it slows down wear because it kind of absorbs the shock. Now, I'm not 100% set on this, and the reason why I went with a cow cow bolt over the CTM bolt with something that is so much CTM is because although this is way lighter than the stock one, it's still a good bit heavier than a CTM one, which allows a little bit of customization with springs and things like that to get the perfect setup for me. And with the CTM, it, there's not really as much customization you can do. And with this being a semi-auto only build, which like it can go full auto, but I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm never going to use full auto. Uh, but with that in mind, I just wanted to focus on getting the most accurate shots rather than rate of fire. So we're gonna tear into this. I'm super excited to get this together. So we're gonna do the upper first. I got my handy dandy screwdriver kit. So we're gonna start taking this apart. Generally speaking, for most AAP uh, tech work, you really only need a 1.5 millimeter uh, Allen key and a two millimeter Allen key. And then there are like a few parts in it that are Phillips head. So those are definitely good tools to have. Um, okay, seems simple enough. I'm gonna take the rear sight off too because we're not going to be using that. We're going to be using the RMR kit. 
and I tried to make sure that I got all of the parts, that, all the tools that I needed this time, so I don't have to keep running off like last time. So we have this completely stripped down. Uh, let's go ahead and build the bolt first. So we got the cow cow bolt out. We have the spring and the guide rod. So we can go ahead and put that in there. And this guy in here. Uh, we gotta build the cow cow nozzle. Now cow cow, even their high kappa nozzles, they do them a little differently. Most of the time, um, you have like a screw that goes in. Theirs is like a pin. Come on, come on, you can do it. Springs in there, and then this guy will go in here. And then we start this in, and we wanna push this in a little bit and shove that through. The piston head will go flat side up down in here, pops right onto that screw in there. There we go, it's on. Uh, nozzle goes in, flat side up, just like the piston head. Ooh, that is nice and dry. It's all right, I'm, I'm gonna lube it before I shoot it. Now we got the gas block. The nozzle springs. I'm gonna have to pull the uh, screws out of the stock bolt. And actually, the selector switch too. I almost forgot about that. So, squeeze that on there. This guy goes in here, like that. There we go. Let's get the screws out of this. We're going to screw that nozzle block in place. Okay, so we got the nozzle block in place, piston, nozzle, and we're going to do the selector switch now. So this just this just unscrews like a and it's two pieces, well, other than the screw. So you want to unscrew that, take this off, put this guy in there, and they have a nice little like ridge in there so you can't put it in wrong. And this guy goes in there, the screw goes in there. And it's probably not a bad idea to put a little bit of Loctite in there because I have seen these screws back out on people and uh, they'll come up to me at the field and they're like, hey, it, it, my AAP's shooting full auto. And I look and this is all loose and in it's jumped over into full auto. And they're like, what do I do? I'm like, well, tighten the screw down. All right, so this will slide in here like this. And then we got to grab the RMR kit, okay, RMR kit, cha chow and take our screws then and go ahead and drop them in here. In the last couple months I've become, I've become a big fan of RMR sites. So I want, and when I saw these and saw that they were like, you could co-witness them, I was like, yeah, I need that. And I, I love that, like, people watch these videos to, like, learn stuff. And, like, in reality, I'm just uh, figuring it out as I go, and then I edit out the parts where I screw up later. Alright, so, bolt is in. Now we're going to put the barrel assembly in. I hope I didn't have to put that in first, which I don't actually know because... This is a new kit, and nobody knows, so uh, I guess we'll put this in here, like this, and slide this in this way, yeah, okay, cool, it just 
goes right on in. And then these screws go in here. And this will hold the hop up in place. So you don't actually have the uh, little side screws in this kit. This thing itself, this which I call the barrel stabilizer, but I've said that a couple times and no one's known what I was talking about, will get screwed in here and hold that all in place. I'm gonna do the fiber optics off camera because I always screw them up. So luckily I have a lot of extra fiber optic to fix it with. You can't all be great at everything, you know? We got our nice high suppressor height sights so that we can take this guy, remove it from the Glock. Don't sue me, Glock. With the upper complete, we're gonna move on to the lower, and like I said, I'm gonna treat this as a full build. So we got this guy, the Keystone Kappa grips, the trigger, and the brand new shiny CTM grip. So first I gotta tear all the stuff out of this. If you're planning on doing this, I am gonna warn you. The uh, CTM grips are a good bit more snug than stock. So they take a little bit of persuasion to get the pins in and out. And I don't mean that in a bad way. There's nothing wrong with parts being snug. Like I've said in other videos, like snug means accurate. Because if your stuff's moving around on you, chances are you're not having accurate follow-up shots. So definitely nothing wrong with snug parts. I am taking all these pins out. Then we gotta take these screws out and we're gonna work our way from the front to the back. So these screws are out. Now this whole assembly should come out. Okay, don't lose that spring. That's for your mag catch. We got our trigger. Now this guy should come out. Okay, don't lose that spring. That's for your disconnect. Pull this out. Pull this spring out. And the last thing you need to take out to strip it out, if you can see down in there, there's a spring right here. It's what holds your uh, magazine catch. If you push it over and kind of nudge it forward, it'll pop loose and it's out. Okay, now we're gonna set this off to the side, grab the new one right here. They put tape in so you don't lose the magazine catch. I'm gonna take that out, set the spring in there. Okay, and then we're gonna slide this down through. There we go. Now we have a working magazine catch. Next, we're gonna pop this pin out and change out our trigger. Now, I really, really, really like the TTI triggers. So this CTM one has, it's got a high bar it's gotta live up to. So we'll set that off to the side. Pop this baby out. There's the adjustment screws. The TTI trigger, it actually screws in this way, but this one screws in this way. So we're gonna put that in like this. All right, so we're gonna start putting this back together. Uh, first things first, we take this spring here, shove that on there. Then we take this guy, and that goes on like that, and it helps lock that in place. Then we're gonna take this, we gotta get the spring in. And uh, it does make it easier to uh, get this spring in if that hammer is forward. We're gonna stick it in part way so that it kind of locks that spring in place and it can't run away on us. And then, and then we take our trigger and get that in there before we put it in the rest of the way. Stick it 
stick it down through the hole. And we're gonna shove it the rest of the way in. Okay, so we got the trigger in, and then we gotta put this guy in, but don't screw it down. So you wanna stick this in there, just get it in place. And then this spring right here, when I said don't lose, it's got a little hooked edge here. You're gonna put it on this little platform on this. I hold it with my finger and I slide it in place. That's the easiest way I've found to do it. And the reason why I said don't screw this down is because now we're going to put the spring on here and pull this up just a hair and hook it on there. So now that holds everything in place and we just gotta put our pins in. There we go. And I do really like the way this trigger feels. I was worried because I really like the TTI one, but this feels really, really good. I'm gonna remove these, put on the base plate and the Keystone Kappa plates. And then our lower will be done. And then we just gotta do the fiber optics. And we're good to go. So I think at this point now, most of you have tuned out because, because I've already gone over all the important stuff. And if you're still here, definitely make sure you subscribe because as soon as CowCow Cow drops their new trigger housing, we're going to be doing a full ground up AAP build. So no base. We're starting from absolutely scratch and building an AAP which should be cool, should be a cool video. Okay. Uh, tighten that down. Take this screw out so we can stick it up in the grip itself. Okay, tighten this down. And that gets rid of all that wobble. Open these bad boys up. So you guys can get a better look at them. This one goes here. And it looks like I'm gonna have to trim these up because they won't work with the uh, base plate because unfortunately, this is not designed to have a base plate. The CTM grip is not designed for a base plate. So if you're putting grips on it, you will have to trim them up a bit or sorry, if you're putting a base plate on it, you will have to trim it up a bit. Which is no big deal. It's pretty easy. It's just a thin plastic. There we go. Now this one. Let's put that on there. Get an idea where it needs cut. Right about there. Now once this screw is in, we can put the upper and the lower together and make sure everything works. Alright this baby in. Oh. Oh my god. This is so fire. This is everything I wanted in AAP. I gotta add the fiber optics yet. But oh my god. This feels so good and looks so so good. Oh my god. So I have a confession to make. I know I'm a huge advocate for the AAP, but I've never liked the way they looked. I hated the way they looked. This looks incredible. This looks so, so good. And I'm so excited to get this out on a field and try it out, especially with these co-witness fiber optics. Oh my God. All right, I'm gonna get the fiber optics in it. Well, there you go, guys. The Take one Airsoft, FU2, I love it. I think it's gorgeous. It feels great. I can't wait to get it out on the field and probably buy more. I wanna try the short one too. Um, just so, so impressed with the kit. Everything fit perfectly. I'm so excited to try it. I love it. 
I hope you guys liked the video. Um, make sure you like, comment down below, and subscribe. Without further ado, let's get a better look at this thing.